Hello. Namaste, everyone. I'm Urmil Chavla. And uh, today we are going to talk on depression as mentioned in Chapter 2 with reference to Arjuna, who is grief-stricken and in despair because uh, he has to go into the war and he's confused and deluded. So... Uh, uh, talk by uh, Lord Krishna, but here he says, he speaks up to Arjuna and says, Oh, Parth, it does not help to be, it does not befit you to yield to this unmanliness. Give up such petty weakness of the heart and arise, O oh, vanquisher of the enemies. Petty weaknesses of your heart means negativities of the material world. So, uh, Attachment, ignorance. Krishna addresses him as reminds him that he is a son of Kunti. Pritha was her uh, original name, and uh, who was uh, known for her might and strength and valor like that of Indra Devta. Why are you getting so feeling so weak in the heart? And he encourages him not to get so disheartened. So. Uh, Lord Krishna's assumptions are based on the Vedic teaching, Vedic teachings that you can fight for the righteous, even though you should be humble and non-violent at other times. Be fighting for righteousness is a duty of the one born of kings and kshatriyas. And if you are fighting for the right noble cause, as a skilled warrior, you have to show courage. So, then in uh, another shloki mentions to him that if you are uh, do your duty without worrying about uh, without worrying about uh, the results and if you just do your karma yoga and uh, work with uh, detachment and equivocal style uh, of seeing everything equal then you will be uh, not affected by it now not to get to the real world of depression and its solutions. What is depression? Now, the definition of uh, depression is feelings of severe despondency and dejection. Depression does not happen from one single event, but a mix of many factors. It creeps into you. Self-doubt in that swiftly turns into depression. You are feeling low. You're having the blues. Everyday words that we listen to expressed first as moodiness, pessimism, uh, melancholy, downhearted, sorrow, despair, sadness, and then goes the deeper level of depression, which includes guilt, confusion, unable to concentrate, prolonged gloominess, hopelessness, and lack of interest. Then starts the clinical depression. And hormone or rehabilitation or readjusting and re educating your inner world. And it is like tuning up that which is happening within you is like an earthquake that has shaken you up inside. Depression is when you have a constant feeling of sort, sadness and loss of interest. And the kind of words we use and how you know that somebody is a little depressed. Oh, you meet a person and he says, oh, I'm a failure. It is my fault. I feel so worthless. Life is not worth living. Hearing and seeing what a person says you have to get some idea that something inside is troubling him and he's deluded. Um, some people will get into gambling, drinking, drugs, 
or some people may have a personality that is hereditary, they have mental con conditions, or they're going through uh, grief from a death in the family, or divorce, or other such stresses of life. Now, to the, the real solution then comes from uh, medicines, which we are not talking about right now, uh, but we are talking of clinical or the social support, spiritual support. Our focus is on spiritual support. Yoga, contemplation, concentration, meditation. For the low level of depression, they can be easily treated through counseling because before you know it, it could become very severe. So at the early stage, a counseling of a friendly talk with someone in whom you can confide is extremely important. So, uh, Lord Krishna being the spiritual uh, guide to Arjun, he approaches uh, he approaches Lord Krishna and says, what should I do? And uh, that means he has faith in Lord Krishna and says, you tell me, I'm lost. What should I do? So, this is where uh, Lord Krishna says, you have to concentrate on the supreme being and focus inwards. And for that, he says, you have to restrain yourself from sensual pleasures and know the difference between the real and the unreal. Uh, who's real? Divinity, God, knowledge, Purush, self, supreme reality, supreme being, absolute truth. You know that real self has was there before this body and will exist thereafter. The self is birthless, deathless, and eternal. It can be killed or it can be a killer. The self is, it cannot be a killer. The self is indestructible. Fire cannot burn it and extinguish it. Water cannot pet it. Air and sun cannot dry it. Self is changeless. Self pervades the whole universe. And then in the unreal, he talks about the pair of opposites. When sense organs in contact with sense objects come and go, grief, why grieve? Old clothes, forget, drop the old clothes, get the new garments, the soul underneath does not change. And get more knowledge and get established in the self at all times. So thus realizing the self, you will get detached. And you will be able to worship the Ish Devta. Concentrate on that one Isht or Ishwar. Go to your religious institution. They are socio-religious. Meet such like-minded people and surrender to God. So these are the solutions that Lord Krishna offers to uh, Arjun. Uh, I will uh, say... Uh, so learn to differentiate between the short term uh, de uh, dejection and depression and the long term, which is more debilitating. Debil so now I will, uh, before I let Harji take over, I will stop with a little poem on when a person is down, they cannot speak. And this one is just a poem I found that I thought I'll speak because last week when we were discussing, we said if you have confidentiality, you will speak up your real deep troubling uh, issues, otherwise you will not. That's why a, a counselor who can uh, uh, you confide in, you can do it. This depressed person says, duct tape is the title of this uh, poem, very short poem. Duct tape is, uh, you know, the big brown gray tape that you can put on your mouth. I can't speak. I can't scream. I can't smile. The real emotions are in my eyes and in my silence. I try to remove the duct tape that is covering up my feelings, my mistakes, and my thoughts. But I know I will leave the duct tape on. I will leave the duct tape on because if I remove it, I'm scared. It is going to hurt people. So I will leave it on. So 
this is where people don't come out and talk about their depression and i'm glad arjun had lord krishna to talk to let us each look in the bhagavad gita as lord krishna your counselor who will answer your questions no matter what the question devotion to god is the answer so this is a mic take and arji will do the rest thank you urmit thank you very much uh, now i think karuna why don't you recite those three verses yes arji very nice urmit very nice thank you क्लैब्यमस्मगम पाथ नैतुपद्यते क्षुद्रम हृदय दौर्बल्यं त्यक्तिष्ठप मात्रास्पर्शास्तु कौंतेय शीतोष्णसुखदुखदा आगमापाइनो निस्तास्तिस्व भारत बाह्यस्पर्शेशक्तात्मा विंद्यत्मुख सब्रह्मयोगयुक्तात्मा सुखमक्षयमश्नुते thank you very much karna beautiful so we are uh, looking at depression today very easily we use this word depression without even knowing how severe this mental disorder is sometimes it could be just a some anxiety loneliness or sadness that is not depression depression is a mental illness uh, that affects uh, around 1 in 10 people in america it is a disorder it can affect anyone so the teachings which we get from lord krishna or other scriptures when a person is dealing with the severe depression may not be able to get the benefit not ready okay so i would say that those teachings sir should be part of our life whether going to the temple or meditation or practicing yoga they should be part of our daily routine so that any time we are hit by some kind of a calamity we don't to sink deeper into this sadness so depression is common but very serious disorder and that typically requires some treatment to manage actually so in these classes we are not talking about the treatment we are talking about the spirituality according to spirituality the common thing is give all your worries and cares to god why because he cares for you so that kind of a faith person who is sinking deep into the depression may not even believe in god it's a constant feeling of sadness loss of interest 
which even stops you doing your normal activities. That is depression. Sometimes a stressful event, like a relationship breakdown, bereavement can cause depression. It could be a family history. They say even giving birth, a mother can go into depression. Menopause, loneliness, illness. But the bottom line is that depression creates a sensation of isolation. It's almost like that you are lost in the wilderness without any direction. People become very negative about life. Very unhappy in their families. Or even sometimes poverty can cause this too. You see other people prospering and you don't. The financial situation, living situation, homelessness, or even any kind of abuse, mental, physical, violence, abuse. Or when you are dealing with a bullying, harassment, peer pressure. So there are so many causes. So when you are being affected, and you are in the state of depression, you really cannot study Bhagavad Gita at that time. This deep philosophy should be part of our life. We should teach this to our children, grandchildren. Not when they go into that negative mood, but it should be like a daily whether it's a Bhagavad Gita or some other scripture. All the religions, all the scriptural messages, hey, there's a God. You cannot see God, but God can see you without eyes and he can hear you without ears. Have faith in God. So that's why it has to be part of our Daily routine. And that's what Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna. Even Arjuna knew all this. Arjuna was well read. He was trained under a great Acharya. In fact, if you believe in the past lives also, Arjuna was with Lord Krishna in the previous lives too. As a Nar Narayan avatar. But still he went into this dejected mood. And Lord Krishna used this knowledge. Higher level of knowledge. And this is what we see in these few three verses. Whether we want to use it for our sadness. Our unhappiness or whether we want to help somebody else to hold their hand and lift them up. So the first two verses are from chapter 2, Sankhya Yoga. The knowledge. Lord Krishna starts out with the highest level of knowledge. Just like you heard from Urmila. That we are the soul part of God. But we really don't see the soul. We only talk about it, hear about it. So we really don't have much faith. But believing in the words of your Guru helps us too. So this is what Lord Krishna is saying in this one. He says, yield not to impotence. O Parth, it does not befit you. So if we are counseling somebody or even if we are counseling ourselves, we got to understand we are children of God. It doesn't befit us. 
to act like that. Cast off this mean weakness of heart. So by remembering Lord Krishna's words like this, we got to let go of the weakness because weakness is the one which is making you sink down into this deep sadness. He says, stand up. And then another term he uses over here to encourage Arjun, oh scorcher of foes. He was a Kshatriya warrior. The world famous warrior of his time. So we learn from this that if we are helping somebody, encourage them, remind them. Do not use the negative language. Remind them that what you are, you are capable of standing up. Standing up means doing your duties. So first, he's kind of reprimanding him, but then he encourages him. Let's stand up. Because there was a fear in the eyes of Arjun. Lord Krishna could see that there is an inward confusion which has reached to the climax because there were tears in his eyes. And that's what happens in very sad people, in depressed people too. Because there's a weakness. Lord, in his high seat, does not speak much first. That's why when we go to our altar also, we don't hear God. He stays mum. That's why it sounds like that he is deaf. Because we keep on arguing. But when we surrender, God talks. He is listening. And that's what we saw in this Bhagavad Gita also. When Arjun kept talking, kept arguing, Lord Krishna did not say anything. When he stopped, he said, I surrender to thee. You are my guru. Help me. Tell me what to do. Lord Krishna started talking. That's what we need to do. Whether we want to go to our mandar room, but believe that there's God there though. Not just a statue, not just a picture, but God who is listening. Who is looking at the tears in our eyes when we are sad? Sit there, spend some time. God will talk to you. God does talk to us. When we come down to live and act as an emotional being, when tears of desperation trickle down the cheeks of a true devotee, the Lord of compassion. Even unasked rushes forward actually. But first it has to be a little effort on our part. God, I'm coming to you. I don't know what to do. I'm dejected. I'm so confused. I see all the troubles from all the directions. Can you imagine what kind of a trouble Arjun felt that he was in? But when he surrendered, we all know what happened. The same thing we can use in our life also. Sometimes it could be a physically we are not feeling good. It's not that we should not go to the doctors. Eh? Get the treatment, but ultimate healer is God. Got to have firm belief in that. And then there was another verse. That's a verse number 14 of the same 
chapter where Lord Krishna is giving more knowledge to him. And that means to us. He says the contacts of senses with the objects, O son of Kunti, which cause heat and cold, pleasure and pain, having a beginning and an end. That means anything in this material world, in this Prakriti, there's a beginning and there's an end. If it's a beautiful sunrise, there will be a sunset also. If we see that flowers are so beautiful, they are just bl blossoming, we know that they will wilt also. There is a beginning and there is an end. They are impermanent. Then he says, endure them bravely. So understanding this uh, is very important in our life also. Whenever we see that this body is aching, getting old, memory is not as sharp as it was before. Remember these verses. He is reminding him that you are a son of a great mother. The greatest devotee. You are not helpless. Do not go into the dejection because of this changing world. World, this prakriti will change whether you like it or not. This is what we have to remember. That to accept the theory of perception of these ob objects. Because all these objects are perceived by the sense organs. Not by sense organs actually, but through them. And these sense organs also, with the time, they become weaker. We all know that eyes, as we are getting old, they become weak. The ears, the thinking, the walking, got to accept it. Do not feel dejected. And we also know that object, even if they remain the same, it cannot give the same experience. To the same person or to the different people also. Because it is the difference in the mental composition of individuals. And our mind changes, keeps on changing. Mind is part of the Prakriti too. So accepting this. We all know this human body houses five senses. And our rishis, they called these five senses the devatas. And these in contact with the objects of perception give rise to sensations of the happiness and distress. And none of these sensations is permanent. They come and they go. Like the changing seasons. It's almost like a the cold water gives us pleasure during summer, but the same water gives distress in the winter. So not because of the water, water is the same. So a person with a higher level of discrimination, the Vivek should practice to tolerate both the feelings of happiness and distress without being disturbed by them. So this is what we learn from Bhagavad Gita. Can we practice it? We got to learn to practice it. When we are not sunk into the deep sadness, we got to learn to practice it today, right now. So this practice has to be there. Not just Remembering the verses, but bringing 
this knowledge into our living. That's why they say the Gita, first you read it, you hear it, but after a while, you live a Gita. That means the, the message in the Gita. And this is the message. Then the third verse which Karma recited beautifully was verse number 21 of chapter 5. Okay, Chapter 5, if you remember, is Karam Sanyas Yoga. Karam Sanyas means we are the Atma. Atma doesn't do any action. The more and more we recognize that we are the Atma, which is part of the Paramatma, there's no sadness in Atma. Just like there's no sadness in Paramatma. We got to remember that. So if we recognize ourselves as Atma, where is depression? It just goes away. Extinguishes. So he says with the self unattached to external contacts. Because there's no contact actually with that Shuddh Buddha Atma. Jeev Atma, it contacts it. But when we recognize that we are the Shuddh Buddha Atma, which is nothing but the Paramatma, there's no contact actually. He finds happiness in the self. All our life we have been looking for happiness from the objects. But this yogi, after doing this sadhana, finds happiness in the self. Somebody can bully you then. Body can be in a severe pain. Could be homeless. There could be a death in the family or a birth in the family. But you know you are the Atma and everybody else is the Atma too. Finds happiness in the self. With the self engaged in the meditation of Brahma. Meditation means thinking about constantly about God. It's not that person just sits like a stone and meditating. No. A person is doing all the activities better than us also. But the mind is totally absorbed in Brahm, in God. He attains endless happiness. So if we can uh, practice this, uh, where is the depression? Where is the sadness? Where is the loneliness? The one who has gained complete detachment from the external objects. Uh, that's what he's talking about here. That person realizes the bliss that is the natural, the ultimate nature of the self. And he attains, or he has attained this through the process of self-development. But this Self-development cannot happen without the process of detachment from this material world. Because this technique of negation does not take us to an empty, purposeless zero, shunya. But when we have negated all that is false, we come to experience and live a total positivity. There's nothing but happiness, nothing but bliss. We all know that Brahm is kan kan me. Everywhere. There's no place where God is not. Everywhere there's a God. That's what Arjun saw when Lord Krishna gave him those divine eyes. There was no place where God is not. That's why he said that I do not see the beginning of you and the end of you. I see you in every direction, everywhere. And I see the light coming out of you. Not just an ordinary light. It's like a thousands of suns 
have risen at the same time, that kind of a light. And light means happiness. Light doesn't mean depression. Depression is means darkness. There's no darkness in God. So we got to detach from the false. That is important because we have been attaching to the false, hoping that we'll find the eternal happiness from the false. False doesn't have the happiness. This kind of a happiness is only in God. In Ramayana also, Tulsidas Ji said, Jo Anant Sindhu Sukrasi. Anand. God is the ocean of bliss and happiness. Ocean. Over here, ocean means it's endless. Not just this worldly ocean, earthly ocean. It's a divine ocean which doesn't have a beginning or an end. In Tetri Upanishad also, we studied the same thing. No God to be blissful. Anando Brahm Iti Vyajnat. Bhagavad Pran says the same thing. God's form is made of pure bliss. Keval Anubhav Anand Savarupaha Parmeshwaraha. So all these verses, all these mantras from the scriptures, they emphasize that divine bliss is the nature of God. So we got to have a connection with this kind of of a bliss, not when we are already deep into the depression right now, so that we don't go there. In the old times, there used to be wells. In every village, they said, we don't dig the well when there's a fire or the house on fire. You dig the well beforehand. And that's why we need to study Bhagavad Gita. We need to meditate. We need to practice. Do the yoga sadhana. Daily basis. While doing our other duties also. Then other duties, they don't become a burden on us. In fact, when we do the duties while remembering God, that God is in everybody. Whether I'm Serving, doing, cleaning the dishes in the sink, or doing the laundry, cleaning the floor, teaching or learning. Doesn't matter. God is everywhere. There's no place where God is not. That's what we learn over here. And a yoga bhyasi who absorbs the senses, mind and intellect in God you know what happens? That yogi begins to experience bliss of God, which is seated within and without also. It is available to us. But do not wait to drink this nectar of bliss at the time of the tragedy. Start drinking it now. Now is the time. There shouldn't be a day when we don't meditate. There shouldn't be a day when we don't do the seva. Because seva is a very, see with his hands we should do the seva. These hands, this body has been given to us to do seva actually. This heart is given to us to love God. 
And this mind and intellect is given to us so that we can contemplate on all of this. So we got to learn how to use all these equipments which God gave it to us so that we feel this bliss all the time and don't go into the sad. We, we never see any these realized souls. Do we ever see them sad? I'm sure in your own family also you can think of people. But you you saw the name of God on their lips all the time. But no sadness in the face. No dejection. Forget about the depression. Depression is a very deep word. We just use it too loosely these days. Okay, but we got to catch it when we get sad. Catch it. It's like a nipping at the bud, as they say. We don't want the sadness to become a flower and a fruit and the fruits. No, and the seeds. No, bud. Nip it at the bud with the help of the name of God. Faith in God. And remember, God is everywhere. God is nothing but bliss and happiness, which is exact opposite of sadness and depression. The name of God. Name of God. Okay. So with that, we'll stop it here today. And next week, we're going to do the next topic. Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purna At Purna Mudachyate Purna Se Purna Madha Ay Purna Meva Visheshyate Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you very much. <laughs>